Windows support. <laughs> what? I wanted to say, <laughs> I wanted to say welcome and instead said Windows support. Yes, this video will be about Windows support in Flutter 2.10. But welcome, welcome to the video, another instantiation of me talking about the newest Flutter. As before, I'm going to look at the official blog posts and I have read them beforehand, made some notes, and I will just give you a kind of rundown, a very shortened version of what this release is about. Just to be clear, if you haven't noticed, I have left Google a few months ago, so I'm no longer in the Flutter team, I'm no longer at Google, I'm not giving you any insider information here, just going through what's out there and giving you maybe a little bit of color or commentary. The biggest news, of course, is the Windows Stable support. So let's have a look at the article by Tim here. Tim, if you don't know, he's the group PM for Dart and Flutter, and he is an alumni of Microsoft. So I, I don't remember exactly what he was doing before he left and joined Google, but uh, he was kind of, you know, in top management position, and definitely he had been there for like 20 years or something like this. So it's clear that this is something that is personally interesting for him as well. What does it mean that Windows support is stable now? Well, it's basically a statement, right? It's, it's not that you couldn't use Flutter for Windows before. You could actually, there are apps that are, have been on the Microsoft Store and have been built with Flutter for, at, they've been there for at least a year, probably much longer. So it's not that it wasn't possible before, right? It's just that now you can yell at the Flutter development team when things break. That's basically it. Before today, you could still yell at the Flutter development team and, and tell them that things don't work on Windows, but and they would listen and you could file a bug and everything like that. But you would, if you're a normal person, you would still think that, okay, this is a little bit silly. I shouldn't be yelling too much because what this is, is a beta or something behind a flag. I shouldn't be really complaining about it. Well, now you can complain. So what is Tim saying here? Well, here's... Basically, the first few paragraphs are there for the press and for people who aren't that much into Flutter yet, probably, because it basically says about all the things that we all know, how it's how it's used around and how there's momentum and more and more people are using it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then he says this, desktop apps aren't just mobile apps running on a bigger screen, which is like very true, <laughs> it's, um, uh, you know, you can't just put something that was clearly meant for mobile and and run it in Windows and then call it day. So they, they are aware of it. Um, Tim and the team are aware of it and they are working on it and they have been working on it. And so this is basically saying, well, the stability means that we also have things like accessibility, input methods and visual styling. So, um, yeah. Tim goes on to say that as with any other target of Flutter, there is an underlying way for Flutter apps to talk to the system. And this can be either through Dart Sys Interop or through a platform plugin. Uh, or like the platform channels and stuff like this. So this this all works. It works with all the Windows different APIs. And there, there have been some adaptations to common plugins that are currently out there, um, notably camera, file picker, and shared preferences. I think, you know, file picker camera might not be for everyone or for every app, but shared preferences is definitely useful to have on everywhere because that's where you put your users shared preferences and you know so yeah that's good to have cool also uh, what tim is talking about is that there are packages now they've been there for some time packages that make your app look more like a windows app one of them is fluent ui which is using the 
Microsoft's Fluent UI kind of uh, basically like material design, but but by Microsoft. So your app can look totally like a, a, a something that was built with Microsoft technologies. But also there's a uh, Flutter Acrylic, which I actually played around today with. And uh, yeah, let's uh, have a look. I think it's here. Uh, that, that allows you to do things like this, right? So you can... Um, what, what I was able to do is, for example, being able to go full screen, as in like full, full screen, you don't see any of the status bars and anything like that, which is pretty cool, especially for games. <laughs> um, yes, uh, but also for any anything else that where you really want to show something full screen. Uh, but it also allows you to do things like this, like, you know, the transparency of the windows. It also links to BitDojo window, which is this project that lets you style the, the actual window, which is really nice and also will make your apps more Windowsy. So we have packages that make your app on Windows look like a Windows app. We also have the MSIX tool, which is basically a way to uh, create an installer for your app then and then kind of publish it to Microsoft Store or something like this. So that's also nice. Next is, well, accessibility. That's obviously a big, big deal for um, not only Flutter, but also for Microsoft. And Tim's article ends on a high note for me and basically says, in the coming months, you'll hear more from us on completing stable support for macOS and Linux. So that's really nice. First thing, macOS kind of already works. I use it all the time. I think the, obviously there's a lot of work on all that kind of getting it to work exactly how it should look like on macOS. But for from my perspective, it, it works pretty well already. And uh, it's especially for development, right? So if you don't want to run an emulator or a simulator or uh, have an attached device, then you can totally work with a macOS app that then you will publish for, uh, for whatever else you want, for the web even, right? And, and Linux, it's like... Um, Ubuntu is using Flutter for some of the UI. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have Linux support in stable as well. So that's Windows. Now back to the, uh, the, the announcement of other features. Windows, Windows, Windows. Dirty region management. This is a big deal for me. Again, uh, performance improvements, right? You know the drill. The best kind of improvements where you don't touch anything uh, and it just gets your apps get better and and faster and less energy consuming and less memory consuming and everything like that. Mwah. So love you Flutter Dev for, you, for it. Thank you for, you know, thinking a lot about performance and still improving it. I can't really complain. My, for example, my game doesn't have any performance problem that I know of except the one that I added there myself and that has nothing to do with Flutter at all. Uh, but otherwise it runs pretty pretty smoothly anywhere. So I'm, I'm fine, but better performance is still still good. And especially for, um, you know, if you want to do something really special and really animated and really interesting, it, the better performance enables this, right? We know already that Flutter lets you do anything you want with the pixels on the screen, right? But if you are limited by performance, then it's kind of, it's a theoretical possibility that you won't be able to, to use. But if things get faster, then you can just apply more and more mm, niceties to your app and more and more and more interesting effects that will make the app or game look much better. And it's not just about the look, right? It's also about the the feel of of the game or the app. It's so I don't want it, this to sound that I want to add 
a, a lot of lens flare to <laughs> to every app i just want to say that if you have a vision in mind sometimes you want to be able to not think about performance at all and say hey you know what i can do it and the better the performance of the underlying tool the better for you so dirty region management is a big deal because basically what what this is trying to address is that currently um, if you redraw even one pixel on the screen in most cases flutter will try to um, redraw everything right and this is this is not good. This is this doesn't actually make your app that much slower, but it will definitely use more resources like battery power and stuff like this. And you can see somewhere around here that someone implemented like uh, the first solution and it went uh, like half, even the first solution that they used, um, used half the watts, half the energy to redraw everything than before. And they also show this, this benchmark that went by, what, 90% down, which is fantastic. So, so this is a big deal. You get it for free. You don't, you don't need to change any of your code. Fantastic. A similar one with opacity layers. Currently, if you, I mean, currently before this change, if you had opacity layers, for example, fade in transition or fade transition, um, that would uh, increase your memory consumption, the, your app's memory, memory consumption for every of these layers. And you don't want that. Well, they, um, you, they have a new picture recording format, which makes it easier for them to save that memory for you. And again, they have a very nice looking uh, drop here. Um, which is a performance improvement. So very, very cool. There are two improvements on iOS. One of them is the animation that you get when you um, have a keyboard or when keyboard comes up or comes down. And the other one is using uh, compressed 64-bit pointers, which is very nice for basically saving memory for you. On the Android side, if you create a new Android app, I mean a new Flutter app of targeting Android, it will use the latest Android version, level 31, which is version 12 of Android OS. Um, so that's that's cool. Also, they fixed or they started automatically enabling Multidex, which is um, a very long-standing issue. It, it wasn't really a big deal for anyone, but it was kind of just annoying to have to add multidex support everywhere. And now they fixed it. Last but not least in Android, the Gradle error messages that are infamously weird and not very helpful now get a kind of an explanation from Flutter itself which is fantastic. It, it basically says like, oh, Gradle task assemble debug failed with exit code one. And uh, which is something that I've seen a thousand times. And and I always forget what, what that means and what I need to do with it. And now you get this nice Flutterfix little pop-up uh, in the command line that says, hey, maybe you should try this, <laughs> which is amazing. So I'm, I'm really glad that they did this. Two updates for the web. The first one is the edge scrolling behavior, which you can see over here, which is basically like it, it was a bug that didn't work. Now it works. So that, that's fixed. Nice, nice stuff. The second web improvement is about that has to do about performance. Uh, basically, before, if you had any platform view, including just adding a link that should work like a normal web link to your Flutter web app, it would create this big overhead because it kind of assumed that this link would also want to paint into your Flutter app, but it didn't. So they created this extra, like an exceptional special case for platform views that are non-painting, like for example, the link, and uh, that saves a lot of memory and CPU. Material 3 
is nice. You can now generate, like programmatically generate an entire color scheme using just one color, which might be nice not so much for like generating the color scheme of your app because you probably don't want to create that on the fly every day, but um, unless it's like a, a prototype, right? But for example, if you're showing a image and you want to have the, uh, the things around the image to look, you know, nice and similar, uh, you can use this and have a theme that is based on like the dominant color of the image or something like this. So I, I like this. There's now also a very easy flag, use material three, which puts everything like all your components into a material three look, which is nice. And you also get a bunch of new material icons that look like this. I uh, this sounds like, a, or it might seem like a small thing, but it's actually pretty great because a lot of times you want, you know, high quality ways to basically high quality icons. And there are a bunch of icons out there, but either they are not high quality um, or they, uh, you, they are not like in the same style, at, like you know, they're even a little, even in the same font pack, they may be a little different. Well, material font pack or the material icons look very kind of uh, um, standardized. And I like that for some applications, even maybe for some games, this might work very well. Integration testing has been completely changed from the Flutter driver of old. Like, you know, three years ago, we used Flutter Driver. Now it's integration test, the package, and the package is now in the Flutter SDK itself. And there is a bunch of documentation and code labs and samples about it, which is a big deal. Like, like I'm glad that they are also talking about how things are not only uh, new and improved on the Flutter engine side or the Flutter framework side, but also on the documentation. If you speak to a lot of Flutter developers, they will tell you that they love the, the, the documentation and the samples and the code labs because it's a big part of, of using any SDK, the fact that you can learn how to use it. Flutter DevTools, the developer experience part of Flutter. I mean, the, the tooling part of, of Flutter for you as a developer. Well, uh, now you can just use Dart DevTools to, to, to start DevTools, which is nice, I guess, um, instead of Pub Global Activate and stuff like that. So, so that, that's nice. Uh, more importantly to everyday life, I think, is the improved support for inspecting large lists and maps. This is, the, here's the GIF. And this is such a thing where I often had to kind of go and look through big lists and see how they they look like. And it, it, it was such a, um, just, it was bad. <laughs> now it's not. So I'm, I'm really glad that this was implemented. The VS Code plugin got two improvements. One of them is a color pickle picker or like a more places where the color picker exists, I guess which is nice. Um, although I have to say, you probably won't be making the next million dollar app by, uh, by selecting the colors of the app in a color picker in VS Code. Uh, I think that most bigger projects have their color hex values somewhere else and they don't really care about pickers in the IDE but it's a nice convenience features, especially for smaller projects, for all the like prototyping and stuff like this that you need. The other VS Code improvement is that you can now switch to a pre-release version of the Dart and Flutter plugins, which makes it easier for you to try new things. Support for iOS 9.3.6 was sunsetted, which is, uh, you know, that's iOS back in the 32-bit era, old, old phones. Uh, it's not completely impossible now to build Flutter apps for, for these devices, uh, but the support tier is best effort now, which means if things break, 
people will try to fix them, but they won't prioritize it too much, right? So yeah, it's uh, it's been a good run for <laughs> iOS 9. And finally, breaking changes. Now, this is interesting. I don't think I've seen this before. They're listing the breaking changes that they have. None of them seems to be too big, you know, um, from what I can tell. But uh, they, they say, we also work to have a small number of breaking changes in each release. So they are... Um, I mean, I, I know that, of course, nobody wants to add more and more breaking changes, but they are trying to even decrease that number. Uh, we'll keep trying, they say. API stability means a lot. It means that you can focus on the value that you provide to the users, on the things that you want to build in your app, and on the things that you want to maintain in your app, instead of trying to you know catch up every few months with the latest um, version of flutter but also with the latest version of all the packages and plugins that you depend on and so on all right all in all i think this is a fantastic upgrade to flutter 2.10 it's not breaking too much. It adds a one big target as a stable target, that is Windows, a bunch of performance improvements, lots of really nice little things. I, I love it. Um, thank you, the Flutter team. Thank you, all the contributors that have added features. Uh, some of them are not employed by Google at all, and but they still added those. Uh, thank you, the community, for supporting Flutter development by being there basically and and you know caring and see you next time